Hi, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, Bidi. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, I'm good. It's uh, it's a bright afternoon today. Uh, winter is coming, but we're surviving it. Uh, so, okay. dear listeners, uh, thank you for joining us again on this Dev Life. I have with me, I'll call her a very good friend, because, of course, we are, we are good friends now. Uh, her name is Bidi Me. And I have on the show today. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Bide Me, so our listeners can know you more. Hi. Hi, Dara. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Bide Me Budin, and I currently work as a sales officer in a commercial bank in Nigeria. And sincerely, my role is not even tech focused at all. My role is sales, marketing, and customers. So I don't get to work with tech except use it to maybe perfect my skills or use it to sell better to my customers. Majorly, that is what I do. Mm. And so, uh, uh, you folks might be wondering, why do I bring a sales and marketing person on the show while this is a dev show? And the reason is because more recently, uh, she fulfilled her goal. She has an, got the aspiration of bagging all Microsoft fundamental certifications. I was like, wow, this is really inspiring and impressive. We will have to bring her on the show to actually talk about her journey and her decision to learn that. So what would you say motivated you to learn, uh, to get certified in all the Microsoft stuff and why Microsoft technologies? Okay. Okay. So in one word, my major motivation was curiosity. Mm. Really, it just started off as me being curious. So when I joined my firm currently, um, I wasn't exposed to enterprise um, software. Mm. Then. That was like my first experience with it. And, you know, I was always curious. I was always trying things out. Oh, why does this work this way? Or how does this work that way? So, you know, sometimes I learn new things. Sometimes it tells me I need elevated access or I need administrative access. So that really got me curious. What exactly is administrative access? You know, mm. how come I can get to this level in this system and all of that? So I started Googling the specific error message. Mm. I, I say specific error message because I realized when you give Google something big, the result it gives you is it's big usually also. not even in line. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I started Googling the specific error messages and somehow it led me to Microsoft Doc. So Microsoft documentation is where everything started for me. Mm. You know, it wasn't even about certification before. It was just about learning how things work or why things work. And, you know, that was what got me into coding. I started learning how to code last year too, when oh. the whole administrative access thing started. So that was how it started for me. Wow. So your, your, would I be right if I said it was your anger at why things were not working? That meant like, <laughs> why would you not work for me? I am using it. Why you would you not work, work for me? me? Exactly. <laughs> and then it, it got to the point where you're like, no, I need to know why this is not working for me and fix it myself. Exactly. Wow. I, I really like asking questions a lot. So people sometimes get tired, but Google never gets tired. You know? Yeah, of course. So <laughs> I, have to, I have to keep Googling, understand why you break, understand why you want. Mm. Hopefully, I hope I don't mess things up really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what, one fun fact is uh, when playing with computers, of course, you've, you've messed some things up, especially if it's your <laughs> system, since you know you really want to play yeah. to fix it. Because when I was learning to code also many years back, uh, well, not that many, I'm not that old, uh, I would break a <laughs> uh, desktop at home, my mother would go fix it, I'll break it again, they'll go fix it, they'll be like, okay, you've broken it now, fix it yourself. <laughs> yourself. <laughs> then yeah. I was like, okay, I could do this. I f started fixing the computers myself, and I'm like, okay, I want to st study this computer thing, then I got into the field, and then it's been all fun on the long, uh, which, 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 is oh, quite, which is quite which is rewarding, yeah. Okay, really, so, yes, now, yes, you mentioned that uh, your role is sales and marketing, and you mm -hmm. went ahead to get Microsoft certifications. You now know how to code. You know about the cloud, probably even more than I do. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, bro. <laughs> you, you never know. At least you would probably know Power Platforms more than I do now because I'm a core dev okay. person. So I would be right if I said that. Uh, so how do you manage uh, your time between your sales and marketing work and okay. the technical things you do? And your certification, how do you manage your time? I left it. So, I, even though I was learning to code since last year, I wasn't entirely loyal to it. Like, oh, I could code today and then 
probably till weekend again before I have the time to code. So lockdown was a very huge blessing for me. Mm. I was, you know, because everyone had to start working from home. I didn't have to go to the office every day. And it was, that was the first time I had to plan myself. I had to prepare my own calendar, make a timetable for myself. You know, I'm a morning person personally. I Everything, any productive thing or any plan that I have for my day, I start with it in the morning. So I wake up as early as 4 a.m. I By 4, I pray first, then probably clean up and a few things. And then I, I start coding or I start reading. And let's say it's two hours. I guess I'm done because I have to pray again. I have to pray to me by 6 o'clock or 5.30. Mm-hmm. So... Everything I want to do between that time, I'm done. And best believe, it really has worked for me. Mm. Because imagine you doing things two hours every day, two hours every yeah. day for months. It becomes a lifestyle. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, wow. That, that, that's really inspiring. Because uh, me, I used to be a morning person. Then I became a night person. Then I became an afternoon person. <laughs> now I don't even know what person I am anymore. <laughs> what person you are anymore? <laughs> yeah, I'm just any time person now. But of course, I have routines I follow. So basically what I do is, before I go to bed at night, I check my calendar for the next day. So what I do is, I actually have this Alexa device. By 7.30 p.m. every day, it tells me what is next on my calendar. So I'll know if I should do a little bit of more work. If I have late meetings, or if I have early meetings, I'll go to bed early. If I have late meetings, I will probably do some work into the night and all that. Which is fun. Well, for me, I'm an anyhow time person. Well, maybe I'll change to a normal routine pretty soon. I don't know yet. Uh, but that will be quite fun <laughs> to see. Uh, so... Now, you've gotten, you've achieved your goal of being certified. You have a routine now of doing the tech things, early in the morning, learning new stuff. Early in the morning. Have you uh, ever failed at any point in time? And how do you tackle these failures and forge ahead with them? Uh, Oh, my God. I failed CL900, Papa's from Fundamentals. I failed it on the first attempt. I, I, oh my God, I was working up after the exam because I was so close. I think I was about 20 points short of the past oh. mark. And I felt really bad. Like, oh my God, if I hadn't gone over the questions again, maybe I'd have passed or maybe I should not have changed some answers. You know, I was just confused. But luckily for me, I got a mail like a couple of weeks later, two, three weeks that I passed the exam. And it came as a surprise to me mm-hmm. because the exam wasn't even in Peter when I wrote it. So, and I, I remember sending you a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, like, what's going on? <laughs> and is it true? Oh my God, I'm going on. I'm confused. Are they kidding me or something? And then, you know, my score wasn't updated. It just showed 700 and I was just happy I passed. And by then, I had already rescheduled again because I was so bent on passing all those exams. Mm. I really was and Sincerely, it has been good to me. It has been good for me as well. Because in terms of me putting myself out there, in terms of me learning in public, in terms of me telling people, oh, this is what I want to do and I'm really working towards mm-hmm. it. And everyone can see it. It's not just you telling them with mouth that, oh, I'm a programmer or I'm a developer now or something. Your certifications yeah, show. Yeah, we'll show that you know what you say, you know. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's quite fun. Uh, I remember failing my first certification exam. I think that was sometime last year. That was Is It 103. I don't know why I failed it, to be honest. I, sh- I just knew I got out of the exam. I think I was short of 13 points. It's like, nah. I felt sad. I was like, no, I'm going to oh take this God. again. Then I took it again. Then I scored, <laughs> I think, I, th- I think I scored 850 or thereabout. And I was like, oh my okay, God. This is nice. Nah, that was better. Then I went to prepared me because I did the practice test before I went for the exam. I was scoring upwards of 90% mm-hmm. and all that. I'm like, why could I? Why would I feel this? But then it was part of my work KPI to have certification exam. So I knew mm-hmm. if I didn't do that, I would fail in some of my KPI. So that was my own pushing force. Even though, yeah, I've had certifications okay. way, way earlier than that. I think six years back uh, when there was a okay. promo when I was a student in the school and all that. So. It's uh, uh, it's inspiring to see that you were hell bent on passing and you've gone ahead to reschedule the exam and say no, I'm gonna pass this ten no matter what. Even I though have not... to pass this exam no matter <laughs> yeah, what. Yeah, and they came back to 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 tell you that you passed the exam, which is quite that which is be, quite good. Yes. Yeah, I, I would yes. I, I would be imagining that you're probably jumping and yeah, I passed, I passed, I passed. No, I was jumping <laughs> because it was. <laughs> The mail came in very late in the day. 
there I was jumping around in my room and I was like, I passed. It felt. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, if you were to advise anyone wanted to get certified, I'll uh, probably purchase the same goal of yours to get all the fundamental certifications. Then, hopefully, in the future, you know, get more. Uh, what advice would you give to them starting up? Uh, where to get materials and all sorts? Okay. So, for all Microsoft certification, Microsoft Learn is like the best place for you. Microsoft Learn because there's this curated path for everything you want to take for exams, for new topics. And every new time, you know, topics get released and, and then they, are, they make it so fun. And, mm. you know, it, it not even, it never even remember that you're actually reading text. Mm. I think that's the beauty part of it because it's always. I was talking about Microsoft Learn, right? Yes. So I said um, for every Microsoft certification, Microsoft Learn has a curated path that you have to follow. So when you go with your exam skills outline and then you follow Microsoft Learn, you see that everything goes together mm -hmm. hand in hand. So besides Microsoft Learn, Microsoft Docs too. Oh boy. Can you hear me? Okay, oh okay I, I can hear you Sorry. now. Okay. So where did I get uh, Microsoft Docs? <laughs> okay, now we'll full audio okay. mode. Yeah. Um, so I would advise everyone to get familiar with Microsoft Docs and Microsoft Learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you very can clearly. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, that's good. All right. Um, so, Helia, you asked why Microsoft certification. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, hi, hi. Hello, hello, hello. Where did I get caught up? Uh, why Microsoft certifications? Why? Because it was the most relatable thing for me. So my organization is um, a Microsoft partner. So we we usually push out Azure websites a lot. And every time I see the link, I'm like, babe, we should learn this stuff too. And which was majorly the major reason why I went for Microsoft education and not for AWS or Google. Mm, mm, okay. Okay. Quite impressive. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's it, guys, on the show for the day. Uh, we've been talking with Abidemi, and she's been sharing her experience uh, on how she got certified, uh, why our failures, our learnings, and all that. For more information about Abidemi, I'll post her Twitter handle in the description below. Our Twitter handle is blog her, uh, even though, yeah, I'll share the link uh, with your Twitter handle. So make sure you follow her. If you don't, I don't know what to do to you. Uh, so our Twitter handle, more bio about her. Uh, in the description of the podcast episode and also on the YouTube video. So thanks very much, guys, for listening to today's episode of This Dev Life. I hope you've learned something. Please do well to share with your friends, family, friends, and foes so they can learn and you know, get insights into tech life, sales to marketing, into tech life, and all that. I will say thank you again for watching and listening up until this time. Till I come your way again with yet another guest on This Dev Life, I want to say I have a very safe day afternoon morning evening whatever time you're listening to this i'll see ya let's say bye have a great day bye 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 everyone see ya <laughs>